So our first, um, okay, now the arrows aren't working. The first biome is the temperate grasslands. Um, temperate grasslands exist on every continent of the world except Antarctica, and about one fourth of the world is covered with grasslands. They are found where there is not enough rainfall for a forest to grow, but enough rainfall so that it does not become a desert. You can typically find them um, within a continent's drier interior, and they mostly occur south of the Tropic of Capricorn and north of the Tropic of Cancer. There are many different names for grasslands around the world. Prairies for North America, steepies for Eurasia, pampas for South America, and veld for South Africa. The climate of temperate grasslands plays a very important role in shaping the environment. Temperate grasslands are known for hot summers that can be over 100 degrees and cold winters that can go as low as negative 40 degrees. The amount of rainfall in temperate grasslands distinguishes them from savannas, as temperate grasslands receive less annual rainfall than savannas, only about 10 to 35 inches per year. The growing season here occurs in the traditional spring and summer months, but is met with a dormant season in the winter, with no plants able to grow because of the cold temperatures. However, the snow that comes in the dormant season provides needed moisture for the beginning of the next growing season. Um, here we have the climatographs. This one's for um, San Miguel, Argentina, and you can see the precipitation stays about um, average. And then the next one in um, Cedar Butte, South Dakota, um, and here you have higher temperatures um, and it seems to be lower precipitation. The landscape of temperate grasslands is pretty simple. It is generally open and fairly flat. Drought plays a large role in the environment as it keeps trees from taking over. Trees are not as well adapted for their environment and cannot stand this lack of water as, e as easily as grasses. Fires also play an important role, again preventing trees from taking over and also preserving biodiversity. Fires can help certain plants germinate seeds can clear ground cover to allow rare plants a chance to receive sunlight, and can nour nourish soil with freshly burnt vegetation. The soil of temperate grasslands is characterized by rich nutrients and a deep, dark layer of topsoil. Most grasslands have mollusks and are rich in nutrients because of the growth and decay of organic matter. Rotted roots hold soils together and provide a food source for living plants. The taller the grasses in the environment, the more organic matter is created and the more fertile the soil is. The dominant vegetation in temperate grasslands are naturally grasses. There are multiple types of grasses ranging from needle grass to buffalo grass and so on. Grasses have adapted to, in multiple ways to thrive in this environment. Since they are a major food source for many animals in the ecosystem, they have adapted so that they grow from low points close to the soil. This way they can continue to grow even after being nibbled on by animals. Since fires are so prominent in the region, grasses need to be able to withstand their effects. Some have even adapted seeds that can withstand the fires. Other vegetation of, in the region are sparse. There are little to no trees or large shrubbery. Most of these plants require lots of water to support their growth, and with frequent droughts this isn't possible. Additionally, fires and grazing by large animals can stop them from establishing. However, among the grasses, there is a wide range of flower species. Ranging from asters to sunflowers to wild indigos, flowers are frequently seen in the spring. And many have adapted to winter conditions through, with underground storage organs and thick stem bases. The animals in temperate grasslands must be adapted for dry and windy conditions. For many species, it is also important they have adapted to eating the grasses in the ecosystem with broad, flat-topped teeth and adapted digestive systems. There is a low, di um, a low diversity of wildlife, but a high abundance of the species that are found there. Prey in the ecosystem have also adapted in many ways to avoid being captured by predators. Many have paws and front legs that allow them to burrow into the ground, which can be serve as protection from predators. Also, many species have adapted for nocturnal life, where their presence can be concealed from predators. In North America, there are a variety of different animals there, um, such as swift foxes, pocket gophers, wolves, coyotes, prairie dogs, badgers, quails, sparrows, hawks, 
and bison, um, just to name a few. Like with most ecosystems of the world, human involvement has had a great impact on timber grasslands. About 47% of what was once grassland has been converted to agriculture or urban development. Um, development of the snail plow had a great impact as this sparked the beginning of turning grasslands into agricultural lands due to their rich soil. In the North American grasslands, the ecosystem used to be home to millions of bison, which no longer roam as they once did since human, humans slaughtered them to a devastating extent. Additionally, continued patterns of global warming could shift seasonal rainfall patterns, turning current grasslands into deserts. Our next one was the temperate deciduous forest. Uh, the forest can be found around the eastern parts of the U.S. and Canada, most of Europe, including southwest Russia, eastern China, Japan, New Zealand, and southeastern Australia. They tend to occur between 25 and 50 degrees latitude in both the northern and southern hemispheres. And almost all of the world's temp temperate forests are located near an ocean or the coast of the continent because both the ocean and the winds are big factors of why the temperature and climate in the areas fluctuate. The climate of the temperate deciduous forest is a very moderate one because they are located in between both the tropics and the polar regions. The central location is the, the reason they experience all four seasons, uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring. Precipitation falls all throughout the year as rain in the spring, summer, and fall, and as snow in the winter with an average of 30 to 60 inches per year. The summers of the biome are tend to be uh, mild with averages of about 70 degrees and then the winters are fairly cool with averages below freezing. Um, this is the chlamydograph. The first one was for Berlin, Germany and it kind of shows like the shift in uh, temperature while uh, precipitation kind of uh, stays the same. And then uh, my second one was from Orlando, Florida which is much higher precipitation and higher temperatures because of the difference in uh, air close to the equator. Uh, the forest is characterized by a wide variety of trees because they are forests. They tend to have a lot of coniferous trees such as pines, but the dominant plant is uh, broad leaved deciduous trees. However, since the biome covers large geographical area, large physical difference have led to recognition of eight major forest regions within the biome. Natural Forest fires hold an important role in maintaining the health of the forest by reducing competition and controlling diseases. Fallen trees open up canopies, which gives light the opportunity to pour in and germinate dormant seeds and allow them to grow in places where they fell. And then fallen leaves during the autumn months provide for abundance and rich humus that decays quickly in the spring. The soil of the temperate deciduous forest consists of mostly alpha soils, which are brown forest soils. The parent materials tend to be pretty sandy and the litter is not as acidic as those under uh, needle leaf trees. The aluminum and iron are not mobilized from the A horizon and then the autumn leaves tend to uh, lead to abundance of humus. Uh, there's a variety of flora within the temperate deciduous forest, but the most important is the trees. Uh, the dominant population is the broadleaf deciduous tree, which are like maple, oak, and birch. There are also smaller numbers of pines and firs and other conifers. Uh, the most important adaptation of the plants is that they have to survive winter months. Uh, water isn't as available to keep them alive, so the leaves often fall off and grow back in the spring. Those that are able to maintain their leaves during the winter have special adaptations to keep alive, such as like evergreens. Uh, some other plants are um, uh, various species of wildflowers, uh, mosses, ferns, and shrubs. The animals of the forest biome have to be able to adapt to the fluctuation in seasons throughout the year, particularly the temperature drop in the winter and then the rise in the summer. Many deal with this through different adaptations like thick fur coats, uh, hibernation, and uh, migration. An adaptation against uh, the for short food supply that follows the winter is food storage that is practiced by uh, like squirrels. Um, some other examples of different species are the white-tailed deer, chipmunks, raccoons, black bears, woodpeckers, chickadees, uh, timber wolves, coyotes, and mountain lions. Uh, one of the biggest human interferences is uh, logging. A large portion of the trees uh, are cut down for different uh, like businesses and luxuries for men. Uh, the destruction of the forest uh, caused 
different habitat issues and uh, erosion of soil. Another issue is uh, pollution that comes from industry, and then the emissions of smog can cause acid rain that damages tree leaves, causes trees to reproduce fewer seeds, and reduces resistance, resistance to disease. Uh, the third one that I have is hunting. Carnivores have been eliminated through deliberate uh, efforts of humans for things as like shallow as trophy hunting. Uh, the devastation that is brought to the populations of carnivores can cause an imbalance in the rest of the ecosystem as their prey go uncontrolled and lead to like a cycle of uh, devastation to the entire ecosystem. So the next one we have is the polar grasslands or the tundras. You had to really divide these into two different categories to accurately represent the biome. So the first was the Arctic. So the Arctic is located in northern Alaska, Canada, and Siberia. It's cold and has minimal rain. Well, here's the map first. but So it's very cold. It has minimal rain. It has low humidity. The air is drier than the Sahara, and in some areas of the Arctic, it receives less rainfall than the Sahara. So here's an example from Anchorage. So there's a sharp decrease in um, temperature in the summer. So the physical environment is very cold and harsh. The ground is permanently frozen. There are minimal trees. Not much can penetrate the ice. The sun remains below the horizon for up to two months, but during the summer, the tundra receives 24 hours of sunlight. Um, in the Arctic, the clouds have um, major impacts on the climate and the weather. The clouds reflect sunlight, which can keep the surface temperatures cooler, and they also trap the heat. The summer is the cloudiest. Um, due to an increase in ice melt, there's an increase in evaporation, therefore condensation. Um, the soil is made up of gelosols or permafrost. It's a frozen layer of soil and holds dead plant matter. This layer extends roughly 14,076 14, feet. During the summer, the permafrost melts and the dead material under the ice releases CO2, which contributes to global warming. So the flora and fauna, the plants are shrubs and spruces. Previously, some of the shrubs and spruces were uncommon in the tundra, but with global warming and an increase in temperature, some of the ones that previously weren't there are now showing up. The tundra is home to 14% of Earth's carbon, and the warmer that the tundra gets, the more ice it's melting, the more carbon that's being released to the atmosphere, so that's creating a problem. Um, for the animals, we have Arctic foxes, polar bears, gray wolves, caribou, snow geese and some snowy owls. They've adapted to the cold temperatures by having thick fur coats. Human interferences. The Arctic tundra has changed dramatically due to global warming. The warming atmosphere has caused some of the southern red foxes to migrate up and they're competing with the Arctic foxes for space and territory. So now we have the alpine tundras. These are located in the Himalayas, Alps, Scandinavian Mountains, Rift Mountains, and the Tibetan Plateau. It experiences uh, strong, frequent winds and cold temperatures. It's very similar to the Arctic. Um, it remains cold and dry throughout the year. The summer temperatures are roughly negative 12 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius. And I did this city on top of the Alps in China. So you can see that there's a lot of precipitation in the July-August time. So the soil is very rocky and makes it hard for some of the plants to grow. It limits the number of trees and if, this, if it's cold enough, gelosols will form. So for flora and fauna, we have cushion plants, some flowering plants, grasses, but these are only in places where the soil is well developed. There is non-flowering lichen which cling to rocks. They will photosynthesize at temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, red pigments in the flowers, they convert the sun's light rays to heat. There's um, alpine sunflowers and forget-me-nots, for example. 
The animals are elk and pikas and marimots and ptarmigans. So human interferences, there's poor air quality, water pollution in rivers and lakes, noise pollution, land erosion due to ski resorts and slopes.